Ishan, an eight-year-old creative child, is often considered a troublemaker among his classmates. He fails every subject and is the lowest performing student in his class. He is in his second year of third grade and his report card indicates that he will have to repeat the same grade. In contrast to Ishan, his older brother, Johan, is an excellent student. Outside of school, he plays tennis and will compete in the forthcoming interstate tennis competition. Ishan routinely engages in battles with the local youngsters who bully him. One day, the mother of a child complains to name Kisher the boy's father, about Ashan's actions. He needs to make an awkward apology to the child and his mother. After they depart, he pushes Ashan to the floor to reprimand him. Although named Kishiro loves his children, he is very harsh on Ashan. He feels that Ashan's poor performance and inability to complete fundamental tasks are due to his laziness. The next day at school, Ishan's English teacher asks him to recite a sentence from the book. He tries his best, but can hardly form a word. He has trouble grasping the alphabet, but the instructors misunderstand this because he is a brat. When she constantly tells him to read, he screams nonsense and is removed from the class. It is common for Ishan to be disciplined. In reality, he spends most of his time outdoors rather than studying because the professors see him as disruptive to the other students. That day, Ishan still needed to complete his arithmetic assignment. To avoid confronting the math instructor, he runs away from school and spends the whole day roaming around the neighborhood. He makes the most of his day by purchasing ice cream, spending time by the sea, and observing the people around him. He returns to his school bus without anybody noticing his absence. At home, we observe him create stunning artwork. Ishan enjoys painting, and his creative thinking contributes to the often outrageous end result. Later, his mother, Maya, attempts to instruct him and make him do his schoolwork. She notes that his handwriting could be better, and he can hardly spell anything correctly. She equates his incompetence with laziness and scolds him along with everyone else. The next day, Ishan must give his instructor an absence notice from his parents. Fearful of getting into trouble, he asks his brother to compose the message for him. Johan makes him swear not to skip school again and writes the message. The student presents it to his instructor, who does not dispute its legitimacy. He also pretends to cough to make it seem that he is genuinely unwell. That day, the math instructor shocked the class with a test. Ishan is given the exam paper, but the letters are dancing. The first question questions him about multiplying three by nine. In his brain, the child imagines the third planet, Earth, in the ninth planet, Pluto, battling. He fantasizes about Earth destroying Pluto and concludes that the answer is three. He submits the exam without answering any of the remaining questions. When queried by his friends, he firmly says that he completely liked the exam. The following day, Nain Kisher returns from his business trip. Ishan is thrilled that his father has returned and embraces him tightly. However, after breakfast, Nain Kisher discovers the forged absentee notice from the day before. After doing an investigation, he discovers that Ishan has run away from school and is walking the streets alone. The following day, his parents meet with his instructors and administrator, who both denounce his conduct in class. They also learn about the latest math exam and its outcomes. The principal believes Ishan is a special kid who should be sent to a school for children with impairments. Nain Kisher is scared by the notion of his kid becoming crippled. Both parents are concerned about their child's future and decide to send him to boarding school. Ishan absolutely opposes the notion. He protests and tears, imploring them to keep him at home. And although his parents do not want to be separated from him, they do what they believe is best for him. That night, Ishan dreams of losing his mother in a mob and awakens screaming. When she attempts to calm him down, he says he'll study more if he can remain home. This tears Maya's heart but Nain Kisher remains firm in his resolve. Finally, 
Ishan is transported to a boarding school in the countryside. He will be required to share a dorm with other youngsters and will only be able to see his family once a month. It's a nightmare for the eight-year-old who has never left his house. The hostel warden greets him by stating that his previous behaviors would not be allowed here. After viewing the school, the family departs with sorrowful hearts. Ishan tears up as he sees their vehicle go away. He remains like this for many minutes, even after the automobile has vanished from his vision. When it becomes dark, he wanders inside the hostel, still weeping. He doesn't speak to anybody and seldom eats supper. When he can not sleep at night, he goes to the toilet and softly cries, missing his mom. Meanwhile, Maya returns home and sorts through Ishan's possessions. To her dismay, she discovers a flip buck depicting him being taken away from his family. The buck tears her heart as she understands how much the child dislikes being apart from them. In the dormitory, Ishan struggles to accomplish everyday tasks such as knotting his tie and shoelaces. On his first day, the Hindi instructor, Mr. Tawari, assigns him to sit on the first bench alongside a class leader, Rajan. The instructors quickly understand that Ishan is unique. He does not pay attention in class and is brutally disciplined by his art instructor. Nothing has changed from how he was at the last school. He is constantly sent outside of class as punishment and is barred from participating in class activities because he disrupts them. He eventually becomes so irritated that he rips his bucks apart Part and discards them. He gives up trying to perform well in school and enters a downward spiral of misery and self-loathing. When his parents arrive after a month, he hides himself in a room and breaks into tears for the first time since he last saw them. When prompted, he rushes outdoors and does several laps around the basketball court to protest. The family transports him to a hotel for the night to give him a respite from his life at the hostel. Johan presents him with a basket of painting equipment as a gift, but he has yet to learn that Ishan has shut off his artistic side and quit painting entirely. The following day, the family bids him goodbye and leaves him alone once again. Later that day, Ishan had never felt so low. He glances down from the school's terrace, wondering what it's like to leap from that height. His lone buddy, Rajan, interrupts his thoughts to inform him about their new art instructor. Ishan thinks little of it since no instructor has ever assisted him. The youngsters are surprised when Ram, the new teacher, enters the classroom dressed as the Joker. Unlike all other instructors, he sings a song plays the flute, makes them dance, and allows them to enjoy class. While the former Ishan would have liked it, the sad one refuses to engage. As their first assignment, the pupils are instructed to sketch or paint anything they wish. Ram wants them to express their creative side so he knows what to concentrate on next. The youngsters begin to sketch various things, each in a unique style. But Ishan does not even touch the paper. Ram first feels that the child is thinking, but even after class, Ishan's notepad remains blank. Ram, worried, asks him what's wrong but receives no response. That evening, Maya calls Ishan, but he clutches the phone to his ears and says nothing. He is told that their next visit will be postponed by a week due to Johan's tennis tournament. To Ishan, this reinforces that his family does not care about him. He rips a single tear and walks away, saying nothing. The following day, Ram notices Ishan kneeling outside the classroom. He questions Rajan about his conduct since he is intrigued by it. Rajan admits that Ishan struggles to grasp letters, no matter how hard he tries. Ram teaches in a school for disadvantaged children. Therefore, he has a keen eye for exceptional youngsters. To learn more about Ashan, he searches through his earlier journals and discovers a pattern of similar mistakes. Even when educating special needs youngsters, he can't stop thinking about Ashan. He had a similar difficulty in his youth, so he sympathizes with the youngster. Weeks later, 
he discovers Ishan's true issue and flies to his hometown to meet his parents. They greeted him and allowed him to see inside Ishan's bedroom. Ram is startled to learn that Ishan used to paint. This makes him sadder that the youngster lost his shine as a result of the strain placed on him. Nain Kisher mocks his kid, alleging that he is sluggish and dislikes learning. Ram retaliates demonstrating the pattern in Ashan's mistakes. He often inverts the letters as if he needs help distinguishing them. Still, the father links it with sloth, but Ram asserts that he is incorrect. He states that Ashan has dyslexia, a neurological disease that causes him to struggle to recognize specific patterns, such as letters and words. In addition, he has coordination issues, which prevent him from tying his shoelaces. The child must have suffered greatly since no one understood his inability to read and felt he was just being sluggish. Nain Kisher believes Ram is calling his kid a retard, and he lashes out at him. To help him comprehend, Ram urges him to read foreign letters printed on a box. When Nain Kisher is chastised for not comprehending the letters, he knows what his child must be going through. Still, he refuses to accept that his son can earn a career from his one love, painting. Ram is determined to prove him incorrect. When he goes to school the following day, he tells the students about all of the notable historical personalities who struggled to study as youngsters. He provides examples of scientists, performers, and philosophers which helps Ashan feel much better about himself. When Ram masks who invented the light bulb, Ishan speaks for the first time in weeks and responds with Thomas Edison. Ram sees a glimmer of optimism that the youngster will learn. Later that day, Ishan is at the pond, building a functioning boat out of rubber bands and leaves. Ram is so amazed that he takes the construction home and uses it as a decoration. Ishan's creative instincts begin to return, but he still has a long way to go before learning to study like other children his age. Ram visits the school administrator one day and informs him about Ishan's condition. The principal considers sending him to a special needs school. But Ram is certain that Ashan can learn among other students. He proposes that the instructors comprehend the student's condition and assist him appropriately. When the principal says it's not feasible, Ram volunteers to teach Ashan every afternoon after school. The principal permits it for the benefit of the youngster. Beginning the following day, Ram employs a variety of novel techniques to assist Ishan with distinguishing between the letters of the alphabet. They learn vice and boxes, Play-Doh, and other sensory approaches. Ishan also uses audiobooks and staircases to learn to calculate. In only two months, he learned to grasp letters that previous instructors had been unable to teach him for many years. Nain Kisher visits the school one day to speak with Ram and brag about how they are doing further study on their son's ailment. He wants Ram to know he is not an absent parent and is proud of who he is. Ram, on the other hand, blames the father for the child's loss of self-confidence, which Nain Kisher cannot refute. On his way out, he notices Ashan attempting to read from the notice board. He cries when he realizes he has unintentionally injured his kid and is unable to confront him. A few days later, Ram arranges a painting competition for both professors and kids from the school. Everyone gathers in the theater to participate. Ishan utilizes the painting equipment his brother gave him for the first time. The competition begins, and everyone gets to work sketching. Even the instructors love the occasion and give their all. By the end of it, Ishan has created a wonderful picture of himself sitting by the pond. He rushes to the front to offer the painting and notices Ram has painted a likeness of him. He is speechless at the sight. A time later, it was revealed that the winning artwork would be featured on the cover of the upcoming edition of their yearbook. The principal admits that making the selection was tough since two paintings stood out the most, Ram's and Ishan's. Finally, Ishan is named the victor, with Ram coming in second. The audience bursts into cheers. For the first time in his life, 
Ishan feels valued for his abilities. He can stop crying and goes to embrace his instructor. In the last scene, Maya and Name Kisher arrive at the school for the year-end parent-teacher conference. The principal brags about Ishan's skill displaying his painting on the front of the school yearbook. The sudden surge of attention takes the parents aback. The principal also compliments Ram for doing an excellent job of educating the student in the manner that he required. Later, the parents meet with Ashan's teachers, who show them the report card and praise the child's evident development. Outside, the couple watches their kid play and sobs tears of joy. Nain Kisher praises Ram for assisting Ishan and apologizes for his actions. Finally, Ishan says goodbye to Ram and returns to his hometown for a holiday.